Okay, so uh, continuing part four. So we have these uh, two questions from the past paper. They are multiple choice questions. The first one was as a bank uses a variety of computer systems, customer accounts are stored on. So we're talking about a bank. Okay, so uh, and they're asking the customer accounts, customer details would be stored on what type of a computer. So if you go for PC, a PC is a personal computer, which means only one person can use it at a given time. So the answer cannot be a PC. An embedded computer is a computer which can do only one specific task. So the answer cannot be embedded. A mainframe computer. Yes, a mainframe computer is a very good idea because many people can access the access a mainframe computer at the same time. Okay. So a mainframe computer would be a good choice to store customer accounts on. Okay. A laptop cannot be because a laptop is also a PC. Okay, a laptop is also a personal computer, which means only one person can access it at a given time. Okay. The next one it goes as the most appropriate input device for freehand drawing is okay. So answer is graphics tablet. Okay, so using a graphics tablet, you can draw anything on your computer. Okay, you may get a stylus with it, or you may get a what do you call a, a kind of a pen with it. Okay, and then you can draw, or you can draw with your finger itself on the tablet. So that's what we call freehand drawing. Okay. The answer cannot be OMR. OMR is optical mark reader. Joystick is mostly used for gaming. A graphics card cannot be. Okay, so the answer over here is a graphics tablet. Then it talks about an international airline stores customer information. Okay, this information would be held on. Answer cannot be embedded computer because an embedded computer is used to carry out specific tasks. It cannot be a PC because a PC can only be accessed by one person at a time. A laptop has the same problem. It can be accessed or used by only one person at a time. Answer is definitely going to be a mainframe computer. Mainframe computer can be used by many users at the same time. So a airline will be storing customer information. Customer information is going to be accessed by many people at the same time. So the best option, as I said earlier, is mainframe computer. Moving on to our next part, which is multifunction and, and convergence. Okay, let's see the meaning of those two. So if you take a smartphone is a type of mobile phone, which means that its primary function, the main function of a mobile phone is to make phone calls. Okay, that is the main function of a smartphone or a mobile phone. But then it can also be used to take photographs or to function as a navigation aid, fitness tracker, music player, or even a handheld game console. Okay, so a mobile phone, <coughs> Primary function is to make phone calls, but it can also do the following activities as well. Okay, so because a smartphone can perform such a range of different functions, it is classed as a multifunctional device. So, a multifunctional device means what? A multifunctional device can perform many functions, but not all the functions at the same time. Okay, so keep that in mind. Multi a multifunctional device, it can do many functions, but it does not mean it can do all those functions at the same time okay so for example you can't use the camera and the navigation aid at the same time you have to use one of them but a mobile phone has both the functions but each of those functions can be used only one at a time if you take for example this photocopy machine okay it can photocopy it can print it can scan it can also fax but each of these functions have to be done separately while using the printer then the photocopy cannot be used while using the photocopy the fax cannot be used you get my point okay so a multifunctional device is a device okay one device that can carry out many different functions okay then if you come on to convergence what do we mean by convergence as they develop devices like smartphone often adopt top technologies and perform from other types of devices uh, this is called convergence okay so convergence blurs the distinction between different types of devices okay so for example nowadays smartphones are so powerful that sometimes smartphones are more powerful than a laptop they are more powerful than a desktop okay so basically what we can say is a smartphone can be used instead of a desktop okay so that is what we call convergence when one device behaves like multiple other devices okay so I have given you all a three examples over here. Do try and watch them. So for example, if you take the Microsoft Surface Pro, 
it is a laptop it is a tablet okay and it's extremely powerful okay so it comes under an example of convergence one device behaving like multiple other devices if you take this particular mobile phone the samsung note 9 it's an extremely smart uh, it's, it's an extremely powerful smartphone okay which is behaving like a laptop which is behaving like a tablet okay so it's difficult to define these devices so when one device behaves like multiple other devices we call it convergence okay then the next thing that we are going to be moving on is in order to use a digital device you have to be able to give commands to the device okay so users give commands to a device through something which we call the user interface what you see on the screen what you see on the screen is what we call the user interface in order for the user to interact with the device he has to use the user interface okay so there are several different types of user interface okay so let's see what are the several, several different types the first type we do have is something which we call a command line interface so let me first show you the picture this is an example of a command line interface an interface where completely runs on commands okay there are no uh, graphics there are no objects there are no pictures there are no shapes there are no buttons it's completely commands only okay so in CLI users enter text instructions and the computer system provides results or feedback as text okay this interface is often found on all the systems of a devices with limited storage because it requires little memory okay so certain applications certain computers will be using an interface which we call the command line interface okay so what are the advantages of using this interface since it is very small in memory size it can be loaded very fast okay so if a software or if an app or if a computer is using this particular interface it wouldn't take a very long time to load because hardly anything to load there are no pictures there are no colors there are no videos okay just black and white that's it so the software or the app would load really fast another advantage is high level of security since all commands have to be initiated by the user okay so in this kind of a uh, interface nothing happens automatically everything the user has to give a command for it to take place now if you take an example of this particular interface which i'm using right now on my laptop it is called a graphical user interface okay i'll be talking about it in a few more slides later for example if you look at this uh, so many things over here loaded automatically i did not give a instruction for it to load these so many things on in a graphics uh, user interface loads automatically but when it comes to command line user interface nothing loads automatically nothing happens automatically so then automatically what happens the level of security is very high okay what are the disadvantages problem number one is you have to memorize all instructions and second problem is it's not at all user friendly okay this doesn't look very pleasant to be i to use okay then once we're done with this do remember the advantages and disadvantages uh moving on to our next part uh, which is the menu driven interface okay this kind of interface is mostly used in atm machines where you have to go from menu to menu you put your card you type the pin and then you have to go from menu to menu okay we call it a menu driven interface okay so displays a lot of options as menus selecting one of these options will either trigger a command or display another menu with further options to choose from okay so mostly found on atm machines okay so advantages is straightforward to use you just select the options that you want it's more friendly than cli a disadvantage is it can be annoying as the user will have to go through many menus to reach a specific function okay so if you want to do a specific function you can't directly get to it you have to go through so many menus okay then uh, moving on to graphical user interface okay so this is an example of graphical user interface which is very colorful very user friendly okay so a gui is controlled by a pointer on the screen and uses a screen made up of windows icons and menus so when you talk about windows each of this is called a window okay this is one window this is another window okay so it's made up of multiple windows 
and then uh, it has icons icons are basically these small graphical objects okay these are what they call icons and then it also has menus okay so if you look over here these are what you call menus so a graphical user interface is made up of windows icons and menus so almost all computers use the graphical user interface so what are the advantages it's extremely user friendly and you also find on screen help is on screen help is provided okay so for example if you come here and keep the cursor it will tell you what this icon is all about get my point if you keep the cursor over here it tells you what this icon is all about that's what you call on screen help is provided okay but disadvantages of gui is what it takes up a lot of memory since it contains a huge amount of graphics okay so when it takes up a lot of memory what happens it's going to take a long time to load okay and then it is also easily affected by viruses since many tasks happen automatically i told you when you switch on your laptop so many things load automatically so when things happen automatically it's always a good chance for viruses to enter your device okay so these are the advantages and the disadvantages have them in mind okay another type of interface that we do know of is something which we call voice interface where you basically communicate with your device using your voice okay you don't press any buttons you don't have to touch anything you just have to talk to your device and the device will respond to you okay so uh, if you look here uh instructions can be sent to the computer faster than any other interface that's true you just have to speak you have to select or touch or press its hands free operation is possible which helps drivers and helps improve road safety so for example if a person is traveling voice interface is going to be very sorry if a person is driving voice interface is going to be extremely useful for him so he doesn't have to take his hands off the steering wheel he can simply talk to his phone and he can tell for example to his phone to call somebody or to send an sms to somebody okay but the disadvantages of voice interfaces it's quite difficult sometimes to understand what you're trying to tell the phone so sometimes the phone can do completely something else you would tell it to do one thing and it can do completely something else it can produce unwanted results okay which can be messy and then finally we have something which we call gesture interface so gesture interface basically works Uh, by the actions of your hands okay so this type of interface is commonly found on devices with touch screens so for example on a screen using your fingers you can zoom in you can zoom out you can move next okay so by swiping their finger or fingers across the screen or by pinching their fingers together to zoom in or zoom out this is known as gesture interface okay so uh, what i would like you to do right now is to answer questions uh, 16 all the way to question number 20 okay and uh, in our next video we'll be continuing from security features